Hi, my name is Donna, and today I'd like to share some information on how to do visible mending on your clothing. Maybe you don't have a sewing machine, you've never even thought about sewing in your life. You can still make the clothes you love last longer and uh, look better while you're wearing them. So let's go. All right, so I brought a lot of samples. I've got supplies that I use for making repairs. And I've got some garments here to show you what I've done and what you can do to improve the fabric of the clothing that you're wearing. To start with, I've got, well, let me show you this one. I've got a flannel shirt that I love and the elbow glue out on it. And you can see it's a big hole. I actually found it when I uh, caught my hand in the hole. So that right there makes it unwearable most of the time, unless you know what to do. And this sleeve had the exact same hole in it, only by using visible mending, I've not only made it wearable, but it's a little bit more fun now. I did the same thing with the cuff, where I put the stitching around, the, the threads were starting to fray, the white was starting to show through, and it was really looking shabby. Now it's totally wearable, and most of the time people don't even notice the patch. Something else that you can repair and make usable. This was a shirt, and about the third time I washed it, it did this. So you can see, that's kind of like disappointing. Uh, now, at the time, I was wearing this with a work apron on it, so I didn't bother repairing it. But if I want to repair it, all I have to do is put that fabric behind and stitch over it, and it would still be totally wearable, especially if I buttoned it up. And if you want to examine that. Other things we can do, I've got a favorite bag that the bottom is ripping out of, I can totally apply a piece of fabric across it, or I can just simply stitch it with visible stitches, whichever I prefer, whichever is gonna look best with it. And uh, I can still continue to use my bag. Next. Okay, so the fabrics you can use for the repairs, um, it's just about anything. You want to match it with the fabric you're repairing. For instance, with this shirt, what I did was use a very, very lightweight muslin so I didn't even put a hem on it or anything. I just laid it underneath, did my stitches, and one of the things I did make sure of is that I ripped the edges when I, instead of cutting them so it doesn't fray any further. I don't have to worry about extra threads or anything like that. And this should be good for the life of the garment. So how are we going to go ahead and do that kind of repair? That's the next step. So I've got the shirt with the big old hole here and I've already cut a patch to put on it. So with my hole right here, I'm going to lay my patch over it and I'm going to cheat and use the plaid to help me lay it out even. If it was something I wasn't sure about, I would put pins around the edge of it that I could feel through the patch to make sure the patch totally covers the area that we're repairing. I think I may sit down now. Is just taking a piece. I like to use embroidery floss, just the real inexpensive stuff you can get at the hobby store. I like it because it's got a very matte finish to the thread. It's not shiny like the DMC is. And so it has the same matte tone as most of your clothes do. And it's very soft against your skin, so it's not gonna be harsh like sewing machine thread would be. And it covers a lot better. It also comes in all these nice colors which can blend or stand out, whichever you prefer. Now, I prefer to work with about three strands. Okay. 
So once we've got that, I'm gonna grab a needle. And one trick, a lot of folks may have troubles threading a needle. If you put your thread over the eye of the needle and pinch it, you can send it right through the eye, except when people are filming it, in which case it doesn't work very well. As I said. There we go. So I generally do not put a knot in this because once more, this is at the elbow and I don't want to press a knot into my elbow. So I'm just going to rely on the number of stitches I'm putting in to hold everything in place. Put my hand underneath, line things up with the plaid, and start stitching. I'm just going to do a quick stitch all the way around the square and then turn it right side out so that I can keep it straight. Do you use pins to you hold can. it, maybe? I okay. tend to not use pins. You mm -hmm. can. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Yeah. But it is possible to use oh, a yeah. pin to help. Just okay. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A, a patch of some kind. Okay. I'm one of those folks that tends to not use pins. Oh, yeah. Which is stupid. No. <laughs> no. So we're just going to do a running stitch. Nice and fat stitches all the way around the perimeter to help put the patch in place. I'm using a rather large needle that I grabbed, so you can do a, use a much smaller needle with what you're after. And, hi, come on in. Thank you. Glad to have you with us today. Oh, oh it's fun. So I just figured that I, I made a little kit for you there in case you want to play along and, and practice the stitches. Right now I'm showing how to use a patch or put a patch over a rip and an elbow. And I generally use about three strands when I'm stitching and doing mending. You want to leave your stitches a little bit loose because it's very easy to do it too tight and that makes it pucker. So just nice and loose. It's the volume of stitches you're going to put in here that's going to keep it in place, unlike the old-timey uh, patches that my grandmother would put on. Where I never liked it because the patch was on top, and it wiggled around, and it, it didn't seem to hold up that well, and it was very obvious that it was a patch, and it was embarrassing when I was a kid. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> so that's the first row right there. On the perimeter and now we should be able to do it without pens and you can see it doesn't take long it's cool because it's something you can do while you're watching TV sitting out on the porch in the evening lots of things I've got some samples of stuff that I did that I can show you in a minute. Have you ever sewn before? Yeah, not much. Not much? Okay. So. It's one of those things I try not to assume because some folks have never known, never seen either end of a needle. Oh, I'm having more trouble nowadays threading needles. Mm -hmm. I would Should I take bring it here and I'll show you so, uh, the trick I just used. Or I can come to you if it's too hard. No, it's okay. Just the chair started slipping out from under me. So. Uh huh. They do that. Okay. So what I do? Oh, you're gonna do it with the full six strands? Oh, you I thought you know. No, I'll do it three. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. 
for some reason. Yes. Grab one in. The last little bit is always the hardest to get it to go. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So then the next step is to fold it and pinch it like this. And then see how it's narrower this way than that way. Mm -hmm. Just pinch and slide it into the eye there. That's a tiny eye. Okay. I should have gotten the bigger one. Why don't you? I will. Okay, now figure it out. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Did, oh, here's your third also. All righty. So continuing around the perimeter of the patch, mm -hmm. once we get the perimeter done, we turn it right side out, and then we can make sure and, and if we want to do decorative stitching, we can. And that's the fun thing. When you're mending, you can use embroidery stitches. You can, you don't want to necessarily add French knots, but you can do satin stitch. Uh, if you decide you want to show the fabric, for instance, something like this fabric right here, you can actually embroider in between on the white area. You can embroider in patterns that will hold the piece in place and also add decoration to the patch itself. Makes it look less like a patch and more like an ornament. Just trying to stay up with the pleat there. couple of stitches passed since we didn't put a knot in. So you can see here we laid out the patch, outlined it with the thread, and now everything we do inside is to basically take that muslin fabric that's on the back and incorporate it to the sleeve so they're all becoming one fabric and move the same together. If you want to look, here, why don't you pass this over, please? If you look at the elbows on that garment, you can see the repairs I've already done on it, and that's the concept of what we're doing. So it's just a case of continuing around, through, changing colors, uh, doing whatever you want, whatever strikes your fancy. And you just want to gather these little thready bits. You don't want to cut things loose. Let those little thready bits stay in place and stitch over them so that the stitches hold them down. And that way you minimize the size of the hole. You're, like I said, you're joining this fabric with another one that's equal, the, an equal weight. Even with denim, I don't like putting denim patches on denim because it makes it so heavy. I much prefer using a medium weight fabric instead. Okay, so, you know, that just using the running stitch is generally what I do with this sort of a piece. I don't play around with other stitches. You've got a blanket stitch, stitch that a lot of people use around an applique, but even that's not necessary. Uh, you can stitch real close around the edge of it with the running stitch as part of sewing the patch on and letting it fuzz a little bit on the perimeter of the patch is not a bad thing.
So besides this right here, I'm gonna let that go. Another thing that I do, that I did on the uh, blue shirt, where's my other piece of thread? Do da do da do. Okay. So one thing that I've got here on this cuff is right here, we're starting to wear through the fabric. You can see the white of the interfacing on the cuff. And that's gonna start looking more and more tatty. Uh, you can also see it's very, very worn on the edge of the cuff itself. And that's similar to what I did here where I covered that up with my embroidery floss. So we took it from looking rather tatty to perfectly fine. Nobody, a lot of people will never even notice that it's been embroidered on. And to do that, I do a series of stitches this way and this way, sort of like I'm reweaving the cloth. I think I need a smaller needle. That one's rather huge. So getting started here, same thing. I don't like knots, so I'm just gonna run the thread underneath the seam a little bit. And I'm left-handed, by the way. You use whatever hand works for you. Just give it a little tug there, and now I can Go a little bit past the seam line to the outside. Don't tug too hard and just come through. Just reinforce that edge on the skin side. And it's kind of counterintuitive. You want to put the needle in so that the thread is coming straight down. I did it wrong there. See how it angled. So if I put it where it's straight down and then angle the needle to where I come out beside it, that means the threads are going to look more woven and a little bit neater. One thing I do that helps me tension my thread is I'll use my little finger like this. Number one, it means I don't stab anybody <laughs> because I've gone like that and stab people and I learned to do it this way. But also, I'm able to tension it to where I'm not pulling too hard. So. Are you going under each thread or just? I'm going in, like, okay, so. I've come I'm out the top. The camera right there. Let me okay, I've, uh -huh. I've taken out the top. Oh, come yeah. straight down. Okay. Wherever straight down is, I put the needle in. Uh -huh. And I tilt the needle to the side and come out just to the side. Oh, yeah. So okay. I'm progressing, okay. but my stitches look straight. But they look straight and together. Okay. And so you can put them as close or as far apart as you want. And then once you get a stretch done like this, you're going to weave in and out this way. So you're not only going to make stitches, but you're going to go in and out as you make your stitch. So I'm going to catch the cuff and just do the sewing motion until the needle gets too full and then push it through. This is also where you have to be careful not to pull too tight. You're going back through the stitches. Mm -hmm. okay. And I'm kind of weaving in and out of them also. Mm -hmm. And that's just to re-secure. Mm -hmm. okay. we're, we're basically weaving our thread on top of the fabric and into the fabric to make it all one piece instead of something floating on top. Mm -hmm. And then double back, do the same thing. Try to look and see if there's one sticking up that you missed the previous, you go ahead and cover it and then go under the ones that you went over before. But it's not critical that you have to match it and you know be absolutely woven. 
it's just, you know, overall the stitches are going to join with each other. So you can see right, right through there. It's already starting to look a little bit woven. And it feels woven. So that's going to, you know, cover up the frayed fabric, build a new fabric on top of it that's going to wear well. So you're going back again. Mm -hmm. I go on the area uh, between the seam here and the stitching here, the top stitching, I generally put four rows back and forth. Uh, it, I know it seems like it's packing it in, but if you think in terms of reweaving the fabric, that's about what you need to have it feel full enough and to have it so that the threads, when they're interwoven like that, they're actually stronger than if you had them stretched across like satin stitch with embroidery. And I'll send this over as soon as I get done with this fourth row. And I usually do not use a thimble unless it's, I've been doing a lot and my fingers sore. So I can show you some of the thimbles I use. Just let me pass that around. And with the samples you've got, what I was going to do is suggest we can just uh, pick the fabric you want to be the top fabric and cut a hole in it and put that piece or put a piece underneath it and press practice patching just like I started on the elbow And then another sample I've got everybody in their package is what happens if you pop a seam like this I'm sure a lot of us have you know heard that and it's like, oh, now I've got a hole. I can't wear this anymore. But you can fix this very easily, even without a sewing machine. Yep, just stay up there. Even without a sewing machine. And we'll show you how. So this is something, if you've got sewing machine thread, you can, mm -hmm, you can definitely do that. should have one in your kit. I'm sorry if you didn't. I apologize. Well, I forgot. Here. Put the... Oh, you got yours. Okay, good. I apologize. So, <laughs> so there's two ways you can do it. If you have access to the inside, you can always go and do stitching to replace what was broken. You can always do that. The trick is, if it broke, then you're putting a lot of stress on that spot. Do you want to use a running seam and have it break again? Or do you want to use something stretchier? What you normally do would be backstitch. And uh, it doesn't have to be all backstitch, which is very slow. You can do a couple of running stitches and a backstitch and a couple more running stitches and another backstitch and that's enough give so that you probably won't pop that thread again. And the way that you do the backstitch is you'll come in where you've got the seaming already from here for instance and just do a couple of running stitches real quick to get started once more I hate knots if you like knots you can use them so I put a series of running stitches for this far just uh, three big stitches there and I'm ready to go let me know when you're ready. So it's just a few stitches to, to catch and get everything started. Then when you get to the part where there's the gap, you're going to continue the line with a couple of running stitches, like one, two, and pull the needle out. And undo the knot that comes in. We always do that. Okay, at this point, you're going to do a back stitch. 
So let me know when you're ready. Okay, at this point, what you're gonna do is take your needle back across the thread to where the last stitch went in, and you're basically gonna make a loop. And that single loop is a back stitch. If you wanted to continue, you could do, just continue doing back stitches by coming out in the fabric above the previous stitch, like this, and then go back in the fabric where that stitch ended. That's back stitch. It forms a solid line. And then on this side, it forms longer loops, but it's very stretchy. What I do here is I do a couple, two or three running stitches and then a back stitch running stitches in a back stitch and that extra back stitch is what gives you the stretch so that you're not breaking your thread. Well, probably reinforce the seam too, huh? Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is if the seam failed, there's a reason. And so you have to not only repair the seam, but understand the reason for the failure so you can keep it from happening again. And one th fun thing is, a lot of times when you're doing this, you'll get a little knot, it seems like, and you're going, how did the knot get there? It's actually a slip knot. And if you can grab the little loop and give it a tug, it'll come undone. It's just the, the twist on the thread will cause it to do that. So let me do a couple more stitches here. So a couple of running stitches. And then a back stitch running stitches and a back stitch and then when I've gotten to my other piece of good seam I just do some running stitches into it and cut the thread keep it from not coming out. And that, you know, that's why I don't use knots. But so I've got a little bit of a tail here and I've used existing seam. So there's not gonna be any stress on those three stitches right there, unless that seam breaks, in which case it's a whole nother matter. And then, so I started out with three stitches on the seam that's existing. I restitch the seam and I go three more stitches this way before I cut. And in my experience, that stays put. And then once you are done there, you can open out your seam. And this one's a little bit messy simply because I wasn't even, but you can see that you, even tugging on it, you can barely see where I stitched versus where the seaming already was. And that's even using the red thread on white. So that's, that's one. And then I'm also going to show you what to do if you've got a pop like this and maybe it's on the bottom of a bag that's got a lining on it and you can't get to it from the inside. You can't flatten out the seam. What are you going to do? And that's when you accomplish the same thing with what's called ladder stitch. And we're going to, from the outside, we're going to fold it like this. Here's our gap and here's the stitches. And when we do that, I usually will once more come into the fabric from way back here and bury the tail of my thread. There you go. Yes, by all means. I think I have another pair here. And once I've buried my thread in the good part, in this case, I'm going to take a back stitch to lock it. You went in one stitch and then went back stitched it. Yeah. Okay. So and you can see it. I gave it a tug. You, even when it's red on white fabric, you can't really see it. So when you're using matching uh, embroidery floss, it's not going to show. And I've got no knots, so there's no lump there to cause the fabric to wear out. And that back stitch just reinforces it. Yeah, that, so that back stitch knot. means it's mm -hmm. nice and, and firm in there.
Okay, so once we get to this point where we've got the thread secured and we're ready to repair our seam, the trick is that we're going to take a stitch on one side and then take a stitch on the other side where we come out here. We're going to go in on the left and I'm going to put the needle in and then let you see what I'm doing. So the needle's going in on this side equal to where it came out this side. You want to make that even because then if the, straight, if the stitch is straight across, it's going to make almost as if you sewed it from a flat piece. It's going to hide that stitch. So if you'd like to see. Does that make sense? And then I'll show, I'll, I'll hand it out when I get the next stitch done. So, did you want to look at it also? So, I'm stitching, if this is the seam I'm stitching, I'm doing my stitches this way in a ladder shape. But when I go across, I want to make sure it goes straight across. And you don't really even have to pull it snug when you're doing it like this, you can leave a little bit of extra and then just pull it snug when you're done. Oops, almost had it. And these are big stitches. Normally I would do it much smaller, but you can see where I've come across and come through. And then I'm getting ready to take my next stitch. So I pull this through. And you can see that there, the stitches are mostly going this way. So that's going to give me a good seam. Again, I go into the fabric even with where the other thread came out on the opposite side. This is called a ladder stitch. This is ladder stitch, and it's one of the stitches that, it's called invisible ladder stitch on that little set of stitches you put, posted on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Because once you pull the threads tight, it should not show. Can you show us one more time what it mm -hmm. looks like? Yep, and actually I'm gonna open it up and let you see it from the inside. So you can see the set of stitches going across and then going up, coming across again. And once these are all done, would you like to see? Once these are all done, I can pull it a little bit snug to make those threads go away. I'm intentionally leaving them right now so you can see the process. When you do it right, it's as if you were from the back side doing a regular seam and you poked straight through both pieces of fabric. When you're doing it wrong, it's a little wonky, but it still works. Mm -hmm. So if you get a seam that holds together, you did it right. At this point, I usually grab my magnifiers. Yep, come on. I can do this. Little nuts. Okay, so I'm going to take it at this point. And so just by tugging, you can see the red disappears. Let's see, let me do it a little bit more without pulling it all the way out. Whoops, pulled it all, out, all the way out. Get nope. to do it again. <laughs> That's the problem with not using a knot. But I did see when you taught, made it taut that uh -huh. it, you couldn't the, they see go. the thread at all. Uh -huh. Yeah, it just sealed it right up. So I can quickly get this done. Hmm. 
And how come you don't like knots? Just curious. Um, because That's most good. of the time, if a knot's in the fabric, uh, if it, there's any pressure on, the, pressure on the fabric where the knot is, the knot will wear a hole in the fabric. Hmm. Or it ha it's almost Murphy's Law. It'll be in a spot that annoys you. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Right on the funny bone. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's not funny. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or just, just any number of things. It's just, in my experience, I'm not fond of them. So I'd rather take like two or three back stitches to secure the fabric yes. than put a knot on. But that is your choice. Always nice to have folks interested in learning how to do it. Even in their 70s. Huh? Even in their 70s. Hey, I'm 65, uh, and I'm still learning new stuff. I, I love, I think that learning new things, even as we get older, helps keep our brains fresh. off by a bit. Yep, I can tell I'm getting in a hurry, sorry. Your stitches are so close together, what's recommended? Is that just the... Well, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to make a sturdy seam, then this is pretty good uh, way because that's actually wider than the stitches on the garment originally. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to leave them too far apart because then when you have stress on it, it can gap. In this case, if it's the bottom of a bag and you've got stress on it, then uh, it can pull out. You just more stitches that you have, the more you integrate the stitching with the fabric and the fabric is supporting the stitches. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to hold on real tight this time and just pull tight and you can see the stitches disappear. Now, when we're done with this, and we look at it from the other side, it looks exactly like we've done running stitches. And if this was the bottom of a bag, then we'd be seeing that support right there. And you can see that my stitches still look huge. Oh, I see. Okay. Compared to, there's the size of the stitches on the, oh, on yeah. the sewing machine. Mm -hmm. So even that size stitch is very large, but you can also see here why it looks like a ladder. Oh, so cool. If you'd like to pass that over. Yeah. Thank you. You didn't know you were going to be my assistant, did you? No, happy to help. <laughs> happy to help. But the ladder stitch or hidden ladder stitch is very, very handy. I've used it on clothing while it was on my body. <laughs> so far, everything we've done is just straight stitch with the fancy bit. So, so we can fix a seam that's popped. We can fix the bottom of a bag that we can't get to the inside of to get it flat. So whether or not it's flat or whether it's in a bag, whether it's a shredded piece of fabric or there's a hole that you caught a nail on or something like that, you can mend that and continue wearing that piece of clothing. You keep a piece of clothing out of the trash. You keep clothing on your body without having to spend more money. All of these things are very, very good things. So, like for this one right here, this is, you'll like this. About the third time I washed it. <laughs> so disappointing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Third time. Third time. <laughs> so, with this one, I can actually.
come through and with this being a knit, it's not going to fray quite like a regular fabric. But I can come up with my thread and you know I can have the bottom underneath whatever. Pull the thread through so the short pieces underneath. When you're using matching thread, it's going to be almost invisible when you're while you're working. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, there's a problem. If you don't like knots, you you do that. So let me do a back stitch. And another little back stitch to lock it in place. And this is where I grab for a thimble. There's different kinds of thimbles available. I like ones that have a little crosshatch rather than the dimples in them because the crosshatch will catch the needle eye instead of with the dimple. A lot of times it will skid and come off. So I like one like that. And then once we get to this point, do a ladder stitch like this. And you may have seen those five minute videos where they're doing something like this with some blue jeans or something. It's a similar situation. I'm just laddering up. So we we'll just go this far, and same thing goes, so that when I'm doing it right, it disappears, and it's stitched together. So once more, even that, you'd think that that would be just, there's nothing you can do, you've got to throw it away, but it can be repaired. Okay, so something about some of the tools that I use. I love tools. I love different things to mess with. And there are different kinds of thimbles for depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, this one is pretty good heavy duty for a big needle if you're working with something. But as this leather wears down, it will allow the needles to go through. So you have to be careful, watch for it. They don't hold up forever, but I like them because they're just so comfortable. Instead of the leather glove finger? Well, the, you can do it yourself with a leather glove if you've got a, a, a garden glove or something like that. Uh, this can be the back of the, the finger even. And just, you know, if this is the part that's got a hole in it, you just use this side of the finger. And then another style that's available is these. This is leather and it's got a tiny, I'll, I'll pass this around so you can feel it, it's got a tiny patch of metal right here and that's where you push with but once more it's much more comfortable than one of these. With these you have to make sure you have the right size. My hands sweat and I hate the feel of them when my hands are sweating and they just they're they're not comfortable for me. I much prefer a soft leather thimble. Then you also have this one available. Of course, you can't have long fingernails with this one, but it's got the dimples, it's got hard plastic, but it's also in the right direction. So when you're pushing with the needle, it's gonna stay in those dimples. And then if you've got fingernails, this is one you can use. You can use it this way, or the Japanese style is to push with it like this. and not poke a hole in your finger. And then there's another Japanese style thimble. Whoops, wrong way. Just like this, when you're doing really thick stitches and you put it right there, it's hard to do. So you put it like that when you're going through. This is when you're doing like denim or something like that and you really need to be able to push it through.
And would you like to <laughs> show and tell some more? <laughs> Another fun thing, uh, when you're stitching, you know that trying to hold both ends and do the stitching at the same time can be a real pill. If you are into gadgets like me, you can buy something that's called a sewing bird or a third hand. This clamps on a skinnier table than this. And the trick that makes it so handy is that the more you pull, the tighter it grips. These spread out and make it press onto the fabric more, whereas other kinds of clamps, if you pull, it's going to release. But this one will hold the end of your fabric so that you can use one hand to sew and one hand to hold. Gives you a lot more uh, control. But another thing I've done that works real, real well is to take my piece of fabric and, let's get my knee up here, I'm sitting down, try not to poke a hole in myself. Now I've got a sewing bird, so I can sew. Any questions? No? What questions would you expect people to ask? <laughs> <laughs> why the heck would I want to do this? Uh, um, why, why did you come? What were you interested in learning? Just um, what you were teaching. Okay. One shirt. All right. Well, um, one of the things I like about this is the whole uh, reuse movement. It, it, reusing an item before it gets recycled is more economical in resources than sending it to be recycled. So that little bit to me is worthwhile to learn and to do, just to do what we can. I mean, every little bit helps, every little bit that we try and do. Um, you can not only save a garment, you can uh, make new garments with this. I mean, you don't have to have a sewing machine to make garments. A lot of people, you just need more time. You know, sewing machines are just a, a time-saving device. But a lot of people still hand stitch. Um, maybe you might look at things like, uh, you know, discarded garments that would be going in the trash. Well, did you know you can take t-shirts and cut them up and make t-shirt yarn to knit with? or crochet with. Um, there's a lot of different fabrics here that you could still make strips, and they did rug braiding, but you can make strips and crochet with, or knit with. So you don't just have to do the traditional rug braiding. Uh, there's many things you can do to use things up before they wind up in the trash. And you know, even after that, they can still be made into to rags or something. So there's some old sheets that I use to crochet a rag rug. Uh-huh. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And maybe I can I can do one sometime where I show how we cut up the t-shirts and things because uh, a lot of people have stained shirts or something like that. You can over dye with writ or something like that. And that's the other, that's something you can also do with other garments. If it's stained, doesn't have to be thrown away. Just over dye it with something that matches the stain. Um, I actually had a favorite skirt is the skirt that I was wearing in the in January when I did the spinning demo and it got splatters of grease all over it what you gonna do wouldn't come out wouldn't come out wouldn't come out so I got a bucket and some old grease and I soaked the skirt in the grease and then I washed it a few times but you can't see the grease spots now so you just got to think outside the box you show the stitches one more time for those that just joined online it looks like there's one or two that just oh my barely goodness well, on. hi <laughs> thanks for joining us mm. okay so just real quick uh this was this was the last piece i worked on but this is a shirt that the the seam wasn't stitched well and so it was failing very quickly after i bought it but it's a good shirt i want to wear it so i can come in here and just take little stitches like so on that side and then take another stitch on this side so same stitch just directly opposite okay pull that up I'm going to do a few of these stitches and just show the magic of pulling the stitch 
not have to go through all of them, but just, you know, mm -hmm. to thank you. Just some real quick. Yes. Yeah, everybody who's late to the party will be able to see the video. Uh, after we're done, you can catch up with us. Uh, feel free, anyone who has questions at home, go ahead and comment on the post that we're going to have for the live feed, and I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. So once more, I've taken a bunch of stitches, and it's one, 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 and they're just looking like they're crossed like this. Just like you may have seen on the video on Facebook, when I pull, the stitches go away and I've got a shirt I can wear. So just a little bit of work, you've repaired a piece and now you can wear it again. And with this piece, this is a shirt, I love my flannel shirts, and I got a big hole in the elbow. What I did previously was sew a patch underneath it, and now I'm gonna stitch and fill that patch with stitches so that I can wear my shirt again. And this is what it'll look like when it's finished. And you can see these stitches, there was a hole right in the middle of it, and it would have been unusable without the repairs. And the same thing with the cuff. The cuff was getting worn and it was looking tatty. And so I reinforced it with a similar color and most folks won't even notice that it's been repaired. And one other thing that we did was we explored ways to repair a broken seam where you've got your seam and the threads have broken and you've got a gap there, what are you gonna do? So we discovered several ways to stitch that seam up so that you can wear that garment again. And when you look back at the video from the beginning, you'll be able to see those steps. All righty. Well, it's been a pleasure, everybody. Thank you so much. And I hope you all had some good takeaway from this. And like I said, please leave your comments and messages. I'm, I'm glad to hear from you. Bye-bye now.